you're back on In Your Corner, I'm Walt Kane. You just saw the answer to this week's consumer quiz, and it appears that some people are using their workplace computers for wildly non-work-related reasons. Even something as simple as checking your personal email account, though, does fall into the category of using company resources for personal business. So you might want to think carefully about what you do on your office computer. Here to tell us more about that is Garrett Husveth. He is the Senior Forensic Examiner with Latent Technology Group. Garrett, thanks for being here. Thanks, Walt. You know, I think that that stat that was up there, that 25 percent of people uh, perhaps looking at pornography on office computers, that is a staggering figure. I mean, because you, you've got to assume that the company is going to find out what you're doing. Yeah, a lot of people do. Um, I, from my own experience, I think it's probably a little bit higher than that. But when we're called into a lot of corporate or matrimonial cases, uh, we do we are finding a lot of pornography on people's computers. You guys uh, say that one in five outgoing emails, one out of five, contain information that poses some sort of risk, either a financial or a legal or regulatory risk. I mean, yes. What, what type of stuff are we talking about? Trade secrets? Trade secrets. Secret. Uh, HIPAA information, and also, um, you know, you could you could even look at uh, sexual harassment cases. Uh, a lot of that involves email too in the corporation. So, you know, in this day and age, mm -hmm. can you safely assume that anything you send out in an email from the office is not being viewed by the company? Um, no, I mean most IT staffs and companies monitor what goes in and out. Um, if they need further analysis done, they'll call in someone like us because we can bring back deleted emails. Right. And is there is there any way you could possibly know this? I mean, this is all going on in the background. Some some companies are even logging your keystrokes. Yeah, and there's, and there's no Sometimes way you would happens. know this. I would assume. No, no. Um, some companies will tell you that you're being monitored. Many won't. And, and they don't have to. They don't have to. No, it's all company property. You know, most will extend the courtesy. But some don't. You know, and, and I've, I've heard some people uh, who I would think would, would know better, people who are in, in my line of work, uh, say things like, well, if, if I send it on, on my, my Yahoo account right. or my Gmail account, right. that'll make it all better. And, and no. you know, if it's going through the company's mail servers, I've got to think they would have access to it. Yeah, um, well, that would actually be going out through the Internet, but still right. it's done on, company, on a company computer, so it's technically done on company time, company property. Is it true, as some say, that you can really never delete an email? I mean, you may send it out, but it always floats around cyberspace someplace. Well, uh, the way a Windows computer works, um, it'll stick around. When you delete a file, even an email, a Word file, something like that, it'll stick around sometimes for years. And it's marked to be overwritten, and eventually the operating system will overwrite that information. But again, it could happen a week from now. It could happen five or six years from now. Now you're you're on the uh, on a computer, whether it's yours at home, whether it's one at work. You don't want people to know what you're doing, so you go out and you clear your internet history. Right. Does that really accomplish anything? Mm, well, no, not really. I mean, your spouse, if you were doing something you shouldn't be doing, wouldn't be able to find what you were doing. But they call someone like us, and we can bring all that information back and actually make a timeline of, of usage. And you were technically what's called a data forensic examiner. Right. What is it that you do? What type of cases do you get involved in? It's all involving digital evidence. I mean, data forensics is commonly known uh, as computer forensics. is a court-approved methodology of securing and analyzing digital evidence. It could be on a computer, a server, cell phones, Xerox machines, iPods, anything that contains digital evidence. And you get involved in everything from criminal cases to, as you indicated before, matrimonial cases. Matrimonial. People think somebody's cheating. Yes. Yeah, so, um, the majority of our cases are corporate or matrimonial. How long after something is deleted can it still theoretically be hanging out on a computer? I mean, I, what's, the, what's the oldest stuff you've been able to pull back that was supposedly deleted? Eight or nine years. Yeah. So back to, at that time, it was back probably to about the mid-90s. It, sticks, wow. it stays around for quite some time. You know, I mean, hypothetically now, and not, not, not that we're trying to advise criminals on, you know, how to right. cover their tracks, right. but, I mean, let's say that, that you have a computer at home, mm -hmm. and, you know, you've done all kinds of stuff, checkbooks, uh, right. you know, investments, software, you've got all kinds of passwords on it. Can you buy that, in, that, that software that's out there that claims to write ones and zeros and yeah, erase the, the hard drive? Does, does that stuff really work? or Diswiping, is it... yeah, diswiping software. It will work, however, most people don't know how to use it properly, and there's always pockets of information left behind. So people, unless they wipe the entire drive, we can still catch them. I, mean, I have a, uh, a friend who, who's involved in uh, the IT staff here at News 12 New Jersey. He right. says on top of that, he believes in taking a hammer and smashing the hard drive. That's the best drive. way to I mean, do is it. Is that yeah. really what you have to do? Acid, stick it in a fire, just destroy it. They actually make hydraulic disc crushers nowadays uh, that will destroy the information. 
Wow. Let's uh, let's talk about spam. Uh, mm -hmm. Why is spam so dangerous? Spam it not only is a nuisance and ties up internet bandwidth, but it also usually has uh, some type of payload that's either spyware, which will slow down or infect your computer, it can turn your computer into what's known as a zombie, mm -hmm. which is a mail server that people on the internet will use to process ma outgoing mail uh, through your own computer viruses, things like that. Do you still have to take some sort of action like opening some sort of executable file or, or can it be slipped in uh, without your knowledge? At this nowadays point? it can be slipped in. Yeah, Most of it you still have to take some kind of action but some of, some of it nowadays is just or, as soon as you open it like in Microsoft Outlook or preview it, it'll automatically install. So how do you defend against that? Anti-spyware software really. It's the only way to go and you know that industry still has some catching up to do. The spammer is always one step ahead. Right. I mean, because it's always easier, I would assume, to, to break a security protocol than it is to design the perfect wall that right. keeps everybody out. As soon as you design that wall, they've already figured out a way around it. And, uh, you know, the, those those keystroke loggers uh, mm -hmm. that are out there, I've, I've, I've played around with one where I actually you know, downloaded it onto my own computer and, and saw yes. how it worked. And it's, it's, it's amazing the way it will log everything you do. Yes, it will. These things can be done quietly. Yes, uh, they can. And you have no idea they're there. So if you're at, a, let's say, a hotel and you, there's a computer in the lobby, mm -hmm. should you assume there's basically one there? I would assume, assume, yes. Uh, on any public computer or computer that's not yours, I would assume that, you know, your strokes are being logged. Um, and that your information is being tracked. I mean, if you want to check your bank account from a public computer, I would advise not to do that. Anything that has a password or, yes. or sensitive information, yes. stay away. Right. All right, Garrett Hussvet, uh, some fascinating and scary stuff. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you. Well, coming up, does your property tax bill have you kind of up in arms because uh, you feel like you're taxed to the max? Well, there may be something you can do about it. This week's Consumer Alert, straight ahead on In Your Corner on News 12, New Jersey.